Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to The 51%, a show about women reshaping our world. Coming up in this edition, we're striking a musical note. We meet one Iranian singer who's campaigning for the right for women to perform in front of men. Also, we take a look at the French Music Festival, whose lineup is 100% female. And we talk to a French journalist about why the music industry has been so slow to tune in when it comes to promoting women rock artists. But first to Iran, where since the revolution, religious clerics have banned women singers from performing solo in front of men. Sarah Najafi is an Iranian musician who wants this to change. A documentary made by her brother tells of her struggle, and it's just been released here in France. Marie Schuster went to meet her. She's a singer, and he's a director. Together, Sarah and her brother Ayat Najafi decided to fight the clerics. In Iran today, women are not allowed to sing solo in front of men. So she wants to organize a concert in Tehran where women's voices can finally be heard in public. And he offered to make a documentary out of it. Sarah is determined to change the status quo. <laughs> From the streets of Tehran to the streets of Paris, Sarah and Ayat looked everywhere for support. They tried to find other women singers ready to take the risk of being on stage with Sarah. Her story touched Elise Caron, a French musician. Sarah is a heroine, a heroine. The way she addresses the mullah in the movie is really funny because she looks at him as if she was a queen who looks down on this poor guy. You don't like what he's saying, but uh, you somehow see like, but he's funny. No? <laughs> they are laughing now, but at the time of filming, they had to keep a low profile. The regime wouldn't allow such a provocative documentary. So the strategy was that we are invisible, and it worked, you know. So during the shooting, I was a Sarah's brother there helping her to organize her concert. To Sarah, risking her life was worth the cause. Maybe it's dangerous, maybe it's, it's uh, something uh, bad happened for me, but I really want to uh, one day watch the movie. There's very little chance that the film will be distributed in Iran, but she's counting on the social networks and the black market to broadcast her message widely in the country. Now, Beyonce, Adele and Taylor Swift, all big names, making millions of euros with huge tours around the world. But there's one sector of the music industry that female artists are still struggling to break into, and that's festivals. One event here in France is hoping to address that balance with its 100% female lineup, as Mark Thompson reports. With the doors not yet open, fans queue impatiently outside Tonight is a sellout. The star, 26-year-old Australian Courtney Barnett. Her performance, just one of almost 50 shows taking place across 29 French cities as part of Les Femmes Sans Mel, a festival dedicated to giving female musicians a platform. Hopefully with more female musicians and and um and you know the spotlight on more of them it inspires more you know younger women to to make more music and not make it seem like such a um a rare um thing <laughs> courtney's hoping to follow in the footsteps of award-winning artists such as christine and the queens mia and regina specter who've also played the event but female artists are still being regularly dwarfed by their male counterparts, even at the more eclectic and mainstream festivals, something that's not gone unnoticed by fans on social networks who have pointed out the phenomenon by showing lineups with and without all-male groups. 
a glaring imbalance which occurs throughout the industry. When you're a girl, you're surrounded by men all the time uh, when you do the business, from the record company, the sound engineers, the technicians in the, in the clubs or in the festivals, so it's a very masculine world. Rock on Seine in Paris is regularly among the festivals with the highest rate of female artists. But even it has only had three headlining acts with female musicians in its 13-year history. I found that the most important thing for a music festival, and for Rock on Seine too, is to respond to the times and to be with the times. The idea is to always, always have the most exciting groups of the moment. Courtney Barnett hopes to be among them, and she's made a good start. Her debut album is near the top of the UK charts in its first week. The summer will tell whether that translates into festival appearances. And that report by Mark Thompson. Now, Marjorie Hash is a Franco-Scottish journalist who works for We FM station here in Paris, and she's also passionate about promoting women artists. Marjorie, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, while women artists very much dominate the pop scene, that's not the case, is it, when it comes to rock music? Uh, why is that so? Well, I think indie and rock music are predominantly white male uh, artists, if you look at magazines such as The Enemy, it's been years since they've had a female on the cover, female alone, because they've obviously had photos with lots of different artists. Um, so it's quite hard to break into because uh, I think historically people think of rock music, they used to think of the Rolling Stones, the 60s era, where women were really groupies or, you know, glamorised muses. And so it wasn't really until the punk era where men and women... Uh, their image kind of evolved and they were kind of equal. But it evolves as well because people think more of successful female artists in terms of pop music, so they're not maybe taken as seriously as uh, an indie music. Is it changing? I mean, mm -hmm. are you seeing sort of more and more women artists? I think there's always been some a fringe of women artists um, throughout the last few decades, uh, but there's been a resurgence definitely in the last few years and people who are more vocal about uh, been all girl bands because there's obviously girl bands where the formation is all women but there's also a mixture where the the front person is a woman as well and that's there's a slight difference a lot of um you know the festivals we talked about you know where they only said maybe out of a hundred bands maybe seven were uh were with women in them but only three of those seven bands were ones with just all girl lineups so i think there's a there's a resurgence of girl power i also think that a lot of the uh, women who are in bands nowadays maybe grew up with the Spice Girls. Now, um, as much as the Spice Girls were commercial and, you know, uh, all completely uh, made up, they did launch the idea of girl power. And I think we all really believed at the time that, you know, girl power, women can be equal and the future is female. It, but is mm -hmm. it still difficult for women? I think uh, it's slightly starting to change. I think there's also a difference depending on what country you're in. Uh, because there's subliminal messages that are fed um, to women and to young girls especially. Uh, we see it with toys, which you've probably talked about, how boy and girl toys. But even if you just go into magazines, uh, magazine shops, for example, in the UK, uh, I've noticed a lot of the time the music magazines are all stacked up near the lads mags magazine. So you have to go uh, past covers with uh, women who are kind of objectified. And then, you know, if you want to buy your magazine about the latest Led Zeppelin uh, resurgence, you know, you can't. Now, Marjorie, since sex sells seems to drive the pop music scene, how hard is it for women artists in general to sort of attract a following if they don't subscribe to that sort of image? Um, I think it is very difficult because even serious indie music uh, environments, the first thing people will talk about when they see a, a girl group or a band with a female front woman, they'll talk about what she looks like. That sometimes comes up for, for male bands, but not as much, you know. And I think there's also the physical appearance playing a whole uh, role. I think people like Beth Dito tried to break this barrier a bit, you know, because she's quite a big lady. She showed her, um, you know, hairy armpits and she was like, you know, bring, take, bring it on. And uh, I think she was a nice change. Um, but, you know, there's always different kinds of people. And I think people are going to sometimes be kinder to beautiful people uh, or people who are deemed, you know, um, beautiful by contemporary standards. Um, so I think that plays in maybe more for girls than boys. So what needs to be done to sort of change the environment as such and to make the atmosphere more welcoming I think, and, and supportive for women artists? Oh, I think a lot needs to be done. I think it's just the little things like such as not having magazines next to lads mags and 
having them uh, available for girls and boys. Um, but men are still very much driving the business absolutely. side, aren't they? Uh, we need more female. There's more and more female managers, I've noticed. Um, obviously, PR is uh, full of women uh, as well. Uh, but also, it needs to be people who start labels. I know there's lots of um, female bands, such as uh, there's a band called Pins in Manchester. They've launched their own label. I think that's quite good. They have boys and girls in their label. But I think that's gives a little bit of confidence. There's also an artist called Kate Nash, who recently launched um, a sort of blogosphere, um, an internet sort of site called um, Girl Gang. And so she encourages women to, you know, share their music, but not just music. It's obviously this issue of women being present. It doesn't just affect music, it affects a lot of different uh, elements of society. And so the change has to happen overall on, this, on a societal level. But, but a lot of it is also to do with confidence and yeah. confidence among women. Yeah, and I think the more girls will see in the media and in rock bands, the more confidence it will give other female artists. I know uh, the band Deep Valley said, you know, the drummer said, I never thought I would become a drummer until I saw, um, you know, uh, uh, the White Stripes and they have the female drummer and she, even though she wasn't the best drummer in the world, it kind of gave me the confidence to think, well, if Meg White can drum, so can I. I so I think you need to see more role models. Marjorie, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there as we've run out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's it for now. If you'd like to comment on what you've just seen, you can head to our Facebook page. That's France 24, full stop, the 51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. Thanks for your feedback so far and please keep those comments rolling in. Until our next program, bye for now.